is brought to you by IG, taking a look at the dollar yen price analysis in particular and the story that is being generated around this major forex pair a top three pair really um right in there with the euro and the pound versus the u.s dollar uh is the story that's starting to build is is there a potential here for another japanese yen crash and we'll take a look at the historical data and it's been if you've been trading forex you can really view it as two uh yen collapses over the course of the last uh, handful of years amid the the dollar's been strong against most major currencies with the exclusion of swiss franc but that's for another day um but it's been especially strong against the yen and at various points has hit you know 30 year extremes which we'll get into in a second and at the end of 2023, it really looked like the yen was turning a corner. It was going to maybe mean revert a little bit, get back to some historical prices um, and appreciate a little bit against U.S. dollar. And part of that was on U.S. weakening a little bit. Oh, they might cut rates. So oh, they might cut rates by a lot. Um, and Japan strengthening a little bit, actually, at the same time. Japan's been, and we'll talk about this in a second. I got a lot of cool graphics to show you. Uh, concerning all this data. Um, but Japan was, uh, their central bankers were rumored to be talking about what would have effectively been the first rate hike in over a decade. Um, and, and so you had a little bit of this relative weakness and relative strength, both in the direction of the yen. And and uh, here to show you some of that price action, you see going into the end of the year, you know, dollar yen goes from above 150 all the way down to uh, close to 140, losing essentially a thousand pips. Uh, the dollar did to the yen, huge, huge move. Um, and now you fast forward to end of January almost, and the dollar has gained back more than half of that. And it's really close to these highs again, um, and really close to this yen kind of collapse territory. 150 has really been the number for. We'll show the data, but really going back the last 30 years, what I have data for essentially um, from IG here, 150 has been you know the lowest point for yen, the highest point for dollar in this pair. Um, and so what what's going on here? You know, why is the yen down more than 600 pips in 2024? It's lost 5% in a few weeks. I mean, some major currency pairs don't move 5% in a year. That's that's a big move for just the first month of the year here. Um, And uh, this has all been amid, yes, dollar strengthening here in 2024, once again, across most of the major pairs. But like I say, especially in this dollar yen piece, and now only 400 pips from its highs, which if the last three weeks is any indication, um, is very doable, uh, could absolutely move 400 pips in a matter of a couple of weeks, uh, this market. Um, and, And this is, happened uh, as uh, 30-year interest rates have been moving higher here in the U.S. Interest rates in general have been. um, And uh, the dollar-yen market topped out uh, just shy of, uh, should be 152, which actually was 30-year highs for this major pair. And you could see going back to 2022, They made a run at that 150 to 152 number Uh, back then. That was kind of the first yen collapse that I was alluding to. And then in the October, November timeframe of last year, another one of these yen collapses. And now very quickly uh, on the verge of that once again, and this is coming at a time where there's, you know, plenty of news concerning the Bank of Japan and the U.S. Federal Reserve that uh, could be interpreted as bullish for this yen, and it's just not going that direction. Um, And, you know, for very fundamental reasons that we'll get to in a second, because the Bank of Japan, though they mentioned the opportunity to hike rates at their January meeting, they still held them at negative 10 basis points. Um, And yes, room for growth, uh, but, you know, still negative interest rates. 
compared to the U.S., five plus percent interest rates. And now they're talking about hiking. The U.S. is talking about cutting. But you take a look at Japanese rates over the course of the last 50 years and a couple of things. This is a wild chart. One, low, still at the lowest rates that they've been in the last 50 years. Two, have not hiked rates since the financial crisis of 2008. And three, if they were to get to 0% or even 1% with their overnight interest rate, I mean, man, are we far away from where uh, Japan was in the 80s and 90s. Uh, and it, I mean, you look at the last 25 years and even the upside looks minimal. Whereas, you know, of course, there are even with 5% plus interest rates, there are plenty of people and I, you know, work with them, great sources of experience who are like, yeah, 5% is, you know, it's 5%, but we've seen historically the 6%, 7%, 8% interest rate. Um, and Japan still on its lows for the last 50 years and still in negative territory, let alone uh, the Bank of Japan uh members talking about how, oh, there's room for growth above 0%. And it's like, is that growth 1%? Because uh, that's, even if the Fed does cut, and here you have the probabilities, even if the Fed does cut, that's not, you know, up to the level of the US. And, and so what's been going on, market not necessarily buying into that uh, interest rate growth in Japan quite yet. Of course, that can change. But also, in the same time, the market is pricing out so many of the rate cuts in the U.S. Now, of course, this is still showing you know, a 44% chance of a rate cut in the March meeting. And I believe we're going to show you the uh, probabilities, yeah, just a second, of uh, further rate cuts throughout 2024. But at the end of last year, one month ago, the probability for the March Fed meeting was 88% likelihood of a cut. And now it's cut in half. It's 44%. It's less than 50% chance. Um, and so these likelihoods are slipping away of U.S. weakness, and the market's not necessarily buying into Japanese strength. That being said, the U.S. is still expected to cut rates in 2024, but by how much? I mean, I mean, what we've seen in the first couple of weeks of 2024 has been, you know, okay, they're not likely to cut in January. They're becoming less likely to cut in March. What if they price out the next meeting and the next meeting? And at some point here, you know, the, the Fed only meets, I believe it's eight or 10 times a year. If they keep, if we keep punting it, punting it, punting it down the road, you know, will this current probability that's saying, you know, the highest odds, 36.7% chance of a 3.75 interest rate, uh, which is, you know, 150 basis points lower than where we currently are, 150, that's a, a lot of cutting between now and December. Um, will that focus start to move closer to 4%, four and a quarter percent, four and a half percent? Um, and the strength continue for this U.S. dollar um, because the economic data has, you know, shown you why the yen hasn't necessarily, even though the central bankers are talking about potential rate cuts, the market's not necessarily buying it because you're still seeing, you know, GDP circling 0% growth in Japan, whereas in the U.S., you've seen a consistently positive value over the course of the last year or so some dips here and there, but yeah, this is all to say consistently uh, higher than uh, Japanese growth rates going back to the pandemic. Um, and this is part of a larger theme that the US economy has uh, in its economic data rebounded better from the pandemic than Japan and China and, and some of those uh, global economies there. Um, but the market really is going to have to see it in the data for Japan before you start seeing it maybe in the market prices uh, here because that U.S. GDP on an upslope, the last uh, handful of uh, measurements, 
Whereas Japan just chopping around 0% with plenty of negatives in there. And now we also have data from the futures options market uh, from the CME group showing uh, that by September, a 20% chance that this yen is back to its 30 year lows or dollar yen is back to its 30 year highs uh, thanks to the 6J futures options. Um, and so the market, I mean, it's not pricing in a greater than not likelihood. It's not 50% chance or 40% chance or 30% chance, uh, something really substantial in there. But 20% chance is, <laughs> it's not nothing. It's not 1% or 5% uh, of this Japanese yen crashing once again. And it seems like the case, it might not be U.S. upside, more U.S. rate hikes, but if the U.S., punts their rate cuts further and further down the line and Japan stays as weak as it's been, uh, you could have a Japanese yen crash on your hands once again. 